Hello everyone, my name is Abby and welcome to Vloguary Day 20. So today I'm here to do my first review video of 2018. So in case you might be a little confused or wondering why I'm doing this format, I've discussed in multiple videos how I've been trying to figure out how I want to get back into doing reviews because they are some of my favorite videos to do. So I'm taking a leaf out of quite a few booktubers books. How do you even finish that saying? Um, and especially from County Tastic because she's the one that I actually saw the idea from and then I actually noticed that a lot of other booktubers are doing this now as well and that is kind of cumulating all the books that you're reading into a review. It's not your wrap up but it's you kind of getting to go into a lot more talk with each book but it not just being one video per book anymore. So what I've decided to do is that just every four books that I read I'm going Going to be doing reviews for them and that is just how that's working out for this month. It can very well change every month and I might do only two books per video. I might do three. It just kind of depends on what kind of works and for right now for January it's today's the 28th that this video is going up and that I'm filming it and I have read um, seven books so far and I'm reading my eighth one right now. So that's going to be two review videos for my January books and then I'm still going to have my wrap up. So we're going to go ahead and get into it because I'm already rambling and I did explain this in a little bit more detail in my reading vlog which will be going up tomorrow if you want to hear more about why I'm wanting to do this and everything. But let's go ahead and jump on in. What I found interesting about the collection of this four, this is the first four books that I read in 2018 and three out of the four of them are children's books. And I found that to be very different from the normal amount of books and the normal types of books that I read. So the first one that I'm going to be talking about is Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. So this one I actually read in audiobook form and I read this one as I was driving home from Florida to North Carolina. This one I gave a three out of five stars. I thought that this book was perfectly good. There were some things that I really liked about it, some things that I was eh about it. So with these reviews I do I do want to like to give anyone that hasn't read these a little bit of subcontext as to what the book is about and then we will get into the reviews. So Ella Enchanted is basically a Cinderella retelling where Ella who is our main character she is born into this magical land of Frell and when she is born this fairy Lucinda gives her gifts her or torments her with the power of obedience so anything that anyone tells Ella she has to obey. She starts to hate and resent this gift even more and so she winds up setting off on this trek to try to find Lucinda and get her to reverse the curse. Now that is the bare bones of what the movie is about that's and then they kind of change everything from the book, add some musical overtones and Anne Hathaway and just slap a job well done sticker on top of it. The, the book is so much more. So let's get into the reasons why. So one of the things that I really loved about this book was the fact that we got to learn about so many of the really cool creatures in this series. So we got to learn a lot, especially about the ogres and the giants. It went into so much detail. We got to learn about the different powers that they have, about the different languages that they speak, about the different subcultures within them. We got to learn a little bit about the elves as well, which was really fun. So it was just a very well-rounded book in the terms of getting to learn the species that your main characters are around. Sometimes books like to skim over that a little bit and just kind of have you learning and wondering what it was that you're reading about but for this one it was just very forthcoming we got to learn a lot about them so now kind of doubling back to the whole Cinderella retelling thing that is one of the things that I that kind of really drew me to this besides the fact that I had watched the movie and wanted to learn more I really love retellings if you've been around this channel for a while, you already know that. One of the things that I really liked though that kind of set Cinderella retelling apart from a lot of the other ones is the fact that Ella and Char knew each other so well before the ball scene actually happened. This one really does hit a lot of points about the main book. It's about the fact that obviously, you know, Ella is Cinderella, it has the pumpkins, it has the glass slippers, it has everything that you would assume a Cinderella retelling would have. This one point really kind of really did set it apart about the fact that they already had a relationship, they already knew each other, they already had that history when all of that stuff, when all the romantic lovey-dovey stuff started to happen. But then normally this is something that I tend to complain about sometimes but it actually just really worked for this story and that was the fact that the writing was so simple. I really like the fact that the writing was just very unflowery and it just kind of everything got to the point and the fact that Ella is the 
point of view that we're looking at it really kind of makes sense that this girl is very direct to the point is trying to get things done and that's kind of how the writing also shows that so another thing that I really liked about this book was the magical book showed all the letters I really liked that this one was added in because I really didn't think about it until I got closer to the end, but it was nice to get to kind of see everyone's point of views and what they're all thinking without actually having to start new chapters and have new point of views everywhere. I really enjoyed the fact that this book was solely from Ella's point of view, but we still got to see what people were thinking and what their true desires were and what was going on and the scheming and everything without jumping all over the place. So then one of the main things that I loved about this, about this book the most, it was kind of the biggest thing that made me love it so much was the fact that your general fairy tale love story. It was not just showcasing Ella and Char falling in love and that was the main thing. The whole point of this book and the whole driving force was the fact that Ella was trying to save her own life. And I love the fact that the whole Char Ella love story was kind of a side plot. Still very visible, still there, but definitely over to the side and not the main thing. Now we are going to dive into a few things that I wasn't so hot about. So one of the things that really drove me crazy was the fact that adults are so stupid in this book. I think that just must be kind of one of the bigger tropes things that happen in middle grade children's novels because I noticed and I'm going to actually mention this point in another book in this review but it just seems like in this story the only people who can figure anything out are the younger generational people. So then the other two things are like a lot smaller and kind of more things about me that kind of drew me out of the story. The first thing is the one that I've been mentioning a lot and that is the fact that I just keep comparing it to the movie and that's gonna happen. That's a lot of that's one reason why a lot of the times I try my hardest to read a book before I go see a book to movie adaptation. And then the last thing I'm really kind of going to mention, again like I mentioned I did listen to this on audiobook and the voice of the narrator really threw me off. She just had a very high, very young pitched voice which for younger Ella, for like child Ella, it worked really well but as Ella continued to grow and get older it really threw me off because then I just kept imagining Ella in like the same state of age and then once the romances between her and Char started to pick up it made me a little uncomfortable because I was like wow you're a baby and then I did have to keep reminding myself how old Ella actually was. And those are more of my preferences about things like maybe I would have enjoyed this book a little bit more if I would just have read it like this. So yeah, but so that is my thoughts on Ella Enchanted though. We are going to be discussing the only book on this list that is not middle grade and that is Batman Nightwalker by Marie Lu. So this one I give a four out of five stars. I think that just on an entertainment level I enjoyed this one more than Ella Enchanted. And I do want to go ahead and throw one big disclaimer out there for you right now. I am not a big superhero DC Marvel person. I never have been. I do not think I ever will be. I have never watched any of the movies. So when I, so the main reason why I even read this is because it's part of a series and two of some of my favorite authors are writing books for this series, Leigh Bardugo and Sarah J Mass. So I just kind of decided that I am going to be committing to reading all four books, but I don't know a lot about the origin of Batman. None of my points for or against this book will be oh it's nothing like the comics or oh this movie is better than this movie you know like that's not going to be part of this at all so if that's your expectations I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and jump into some of the things that I really liked about this book though and I'm really going to kind of focus on the characters because those really were kind of the standout points of this book. So first of all let's mention Alfred. <laughs> he is a wonderful British little baby bean in this book and he was I think my favorite character. I just loved how protective and how loving he was over Bruce and yet he was definitely the character that was like trying to shove the most common sense into Bruce's big fat head. He loves Bruce and you can tell and that really means a lot to me and I just really liked their relationship. Then I really liked the, how the fact that we got to see Bruce's more intelligent side. We really got to see like it, he wasn't just the spoiled little rich kid and he you could definitely really see his aptitude when it comes to technology. I like some of the other battle scenes as well where he really kind of showed off his 
proficiency in those types of situations. So then just getting back into the character world for a minute, I really liked Madeline. I thought that she was a great anti-hero slash still a villain. You know, I really liked the fact that I was very suspicious of her the entire time and the fact that I just never knew if we could trust her. And then on the other side of Madeline, I really love Diane. I like the fact that her and Bruce have a strictly platonic relationship and there was no sense or hint or anything other stating otherwise. It's, it, this book really does show the fact that a boy and a girl can be just friends and there is no underlying tension or anything that might prove that there could be anything in the future and it was great and I really appreciated that. And then the last thing I'm going to mention that I really liked about this book that is kind of one of the biggest things was the mentioning of white privilege in this book, especially from Madeline to Bruce. Bruce gets involved in police activity and that's against the law for for civilians to interfere with, with that kind of stuff. And if it was anyone else, if it was really anyone else with a different skin color, he could have gotten a much different sentence than Bruce did. But because he is the white, spoiled, rich kid that lives in this area, that his parents are so well known, his history is so well known, he gets off kind of with a lighter sentence. It is still a very heavy sentence. I just really like the fact that M Marie Lou didn't really hide from that. She didn't she didn't take that away and I really really loved getting to read about that. So now we're going to get into some things that I wasn't a huge fan of about this book. One of them is poor Harvey. So despite the fact that Bruce and Diane have a wonderful relationship, I feel like poor Harvey really really just got jammed over to the side and was forgotten so much. And then just the pacing overall was really kind of erratic for me. I felt like I could never get a handle on the pacing that Marie Lou was going for with this. I feel like sometimes it just drug on and on the paragraphs that she was writing about, especially the continuous description of the asylum that Bruce worked in. It, feel, it just felt like every time he went in there to work, we kind of heard the same things about the same areas that he was in. And I was, there were some points where I was just kind of like, okay, we get it. Let's move on. And then the plot twist was not really a big plot twist for me. I definitely saw the unveiling of the villain to be very obvious to me. I kind of saw it from the get-go, but that's just maybe me. And it didn't take my enjoyment away from the book because normally I'm pretty good at guessing plot twists now because I read so many YA books but I was still I think hoping for like a little bit of a shock factor and I really didn't get it and then <laughs> the last thing that I wasn't the biggest fan of was the beginning of the romance between Madeline and Bruce it really kind of seems like there was a very big imbalance in this relationship slash hatred like there was a lot going on with that relationship it was very twisted there there was a, a lot wrong. There was a bit, really, really big power imbalance with between this between this couple, and I just again wasn't that wasn't really digging it. The good thing is that you doesn't really delve that far. I really actually feel like it was just kind of more of an obsession on Bruce's side than really anything else. But I did still like how the book ended and how the relationship stands at the end. I like the direction that Marie Lou went with this and I at the very end of the day I was pleased with this book. I gave it a four out of five stars after all so yes. Now we're moving into the next book that is a middle grade, the third book out of the four that I'm going to be mentioning today and this one is the only one that I actually gave a five out of five stars to. I really enjoyed this book a lot and that is Witchwood by Tahara Mafi. Now this is a companionship novel to Furthermore which I read last year and this one is about a girl named Laylee who is that right there, that little beauty and she for a living scrubs and clean corpses and sends their souls off to to the other world to where they go after she lets them go and it focuses on her but then because it is a companionship Alice and Oliver from book one do come crashing in at some point we have a couple other characters in here and it is a really fun time so the first thing that I just want to say right off the bat was how much I loved the narration I really really love Tahra's very flowery very embellished just beautiful writing. Even though this is a pretty dark book, that was one of the things that I enjoyed most was the humor from the narration. That was really lifting because this book is quite dark. This girl scrubs dead bodies 
that's what she does and she's like a 12 13 year old I don't remember exactly how old she is but she's like a kid and she scrubs dead bodies we'll actually go ahead and mention one of the things that I didn't like about this book and that was the fact that are you sure this is middle grade this book is so dark this book is dark and gruesome and queasy and squeamish and how many other descriptive words can I give until you understand that this is a dark book I would not give this to my ten well would I give this to my 10 year old cousin actually probably yes just because I would love to see her react to this I probably would wait not gonna lie uh, there are some things in this book that are just like I said they're very dark and <sighs> conflict is real y'all. Well, let's go ahead and mention otherwise some things that I really loved about this book and that is just the character Laylee as a whole. I loved her. The compassion and the love and just the overprotectiveness that I felt from her from the very beginning to the very end was so real. I felt so tied to her character and just so in love with the way that Tahara wrote this. So then the other thing that I just enjoyed so much was kind of the lesson that you learn alongside with Alice. Laylee is the person that Alice is charged with to go and help. So, and we definitely kind of learn the lessons as Alice goes along. And it's just really cool. And we do get some reappearances of other characters. We get to learn about the traveling between different towns in this book. And it's really cool. And I just really feel like between this book, our knowledge of the world of furthermore Witchwood and all that just kind of evolves and expands and gets even bigger and it's really cool. And then the only other thing I guess I'll mention really fast that I wasn't a huge fan of with this book was kind of the romances. I really loved how in the first book there were none. You know Oliver and Alice have become super super close friends and that's kind of it. While with this one Alice and the person that she winds up starting to like I'm okay with but Lately, I'm not, I wasn't 100% convinced because I feel like with just the kind of damaged soul that Lately had become, she just really needed love and comfort for those around her. And I don't think that she's in the place in her life right now to even start looking for romance. So ho ho, book number four and the last one we're gonna be talking about today is The Gallery by Laura Marks Fitzgerald. And I gave this one a four out of five stars. This one is more of a actual like historical fiction, mystery, novel, set in the Roaring Twenties. First of all, I'm going to tell you the things that I loved about this book. First of all, the setting. This is set in the Roaring Twenties. The Roaring Twenties. I love that setting, the flappers and everything, and we really do get a lot of information about the Twenties. In this one, we get to see the stock market crashing. We get to see a big party that has like the flappers and everything in it. We get to see speakeasies. It, it's it's all mentioned in here. The, the setting is set very, very well. And also, for the fact that this is a middle grade book, I really loved the mystery. I love the fact that I honestly could not figure out what was going on. So this is the book, though, where I am going to mention the same thing that I did earlier though where these adults are so dumb how is it that the 12 year old girl Martha is the one that figures out what's going on but the other adults in the house as well as her mother can't figure it out you know that's the ugh. in a real life they would have figured it out but I guess this is the whole thing of the extension of disbelief is that what that is I can't figure out sayings today. It's fine. And as I say that, I still loved her mother so much. How hardworking her mother was in this book really resonated with me because my mother is amazing and ex exactly like this where she works hard to provide for her children. And I really like the, the way that her mom's like very no nonsense, like you are gonna get the things done that you need to get done. And she tries to rein in Martha. <laughs> and never really works but it's still really fun. This book also is kind of like an art mystery book so there's a lot of paintings that are mentioned in this book that are all very real and I really liked getting to look up the books on my phone and kind of study the paintings as Martha was in this book and trying to see and trying to see what Martha sees and what hints Rose is leaving for Martha. It's very fun and that was kind of added an extra sense of being very included in this novel book. And the only other thing I wasn't a huge fan of, something that actually really took me by surprise, crazy amount of spoileriness of the book Jane Eyre. So the fact that that's books that eventually, those are classics, those are books that eventually these kids that are reading this book could grow up wanting to read. And the fact that you could be spoiling such a huge classic novel 
really, really took me by surprise. So yes, those are the four books that I am mentioning today. Thank you so much for watching. Please do know that not every review that I put out will be as happy and cheery as this. I'm not always going to enjoy the books as much as I enjoyed these four. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button down below that lets you know when I make new videos as well as a little notification bell right beside it. Also, please remember that all my social media links as well as my Patreon page is linked down below. I would love if you guys want to go and check all those out and come and talk to me on some social medias. So again, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.